Hey everybody, I'm Calder Moore, a 3D artist that's been in the industry for 12 plus years now, working on everything from preschool TV shows to Magic the Gathering, Dungeons and Dragons, and a bunch of other illustrative work. Throughout these 12 years, I've kind of focused myself onto creating 3D stylized landscapes and 2D painterly landscapes. And recently I've kind of been diving into a bunch of characters for my sort of world in search of. And creating these characters, I had discovered Character Creator 4 and today I'm going to take you guys through how I go about using Character Creator 4 along with other tools like Marvelous Designer, Substance Painter, Arnold Render, and Cinema 4D to create these detailed, stylized characters. And so to start this character, I had to go and collect my reference images and stuff like that just to get an idea and direction of where I wanted to take this guy before I started sketching out his thumbnail sketch. I tend to collect a lot of my reference images and inspiration from just going onto Pinterest and I like to sort of group everything together into a nice cohesive space using this program called Pure Ref to organize all my images. So after collecting all my reference images and inspiration, I'll go into Photoshop and start sketching out the initial ideas I want to take this character into. And so here's kind of like the end result I ended up with for this guy. Um, I wanted this sort of like sneaky smuggler pilot guy who was a kind of reserved on the outside with his more desaturated like uh, pilot jacket, but then underneath you can kind of see hints of the Lightbringers sort of like themes with the super fluorescent and like pearlescent sort of like clothing and stuff. So when I actually want to start creating my 3D character, I'll almost always start in Character Creator 4. In here, you can get an amazing base that's already rigged and UV'd and just like ready to go and you can go in and customize it and kind of create all the character and stuff you want from like the face and body within this program. So I'll always kind of start with the neutral male or neutral female actors and then go into the morph tab here and play with the sliders and stuff to create the look I want for this character. Um, and it's just I'll use just kind of like play with the sliders until I kind of get what I'm looking for out of the character or you can kind of like go in and play with the features on the face directly and you can see where they highlight and how you can kind of like play with them in there like that and kind of like push the features where you're wanting the character to go. I'll also kind of sometimes go into, you can go into like the main tabs of like the head or the body and there's some more global traits that you can adjust and you can see how it kind of like adjusts the character's face completely. So sometimes I'll like play with these to kind of establish a little bit of a direction and then go in and further adjust the faces and stuff until I get to where I want to be. So playing with those sliders, here you can see the end result I ended up with for this older character that I wanted to create. Kind of like pushing and sinking in as like a temple area and cheekbones and kind of like making his face feel a little bit more like droopy and just kind of create like a nice good solid look from that. And then I kind of like shrunk in the body and stuff just to um, have the marvelous clothes kind of fit better on him and would be more stylized for my final look. So here's another character I created where I actually ended up using the Gozi feature um, just to push her cheekbone into this sort of like nice clean line and to a little bit more of a point for her chin here. Um, and then it's just super easy to like bring your character over. You use like, I usually just bring it over in A pose, go into Gozi, and then like you have like your character right in here where I kind of like 
use the H polish brush to sort of like define her features a bit more. Um, and then just bring the Gozi back into cinema or into character creator four. And then you can easily update your model and all this like come back in here with the ZBrush adjustments. And then you're still actually able to tweak everything with like the sliders and stuff to further customize the character. For exporting my character out of Character Creator 4 and to bring into like Marvelous Designer or Substance Painter and stuff like that, I'll use the export FBX cloth character function and make sure or I uncheck embed textures just because I'm not actually using any of the textures included in the model. And I'll export as the current pose, so it's in more of like the A pose, as well as first frame and bind pose. That kind of like allows me to go into frame one and sort of like attach stuff to the character with in the bind pose, like the clothing or like the accessories and stuff. And I'll export them out and save them where I want to save them. After exporting that character out of CC4, I'll usually start next inside of Marvelous Designer, where I'll do like the next most important part of them, which will be like their outfit. Uh, and so you can see how I sort of ended up with this outfit for him. Um, kind of creating like this sort of like retro style jacket that also has like a little bit of that unique flair to it and kind of like give them some like shoulder straps or whatever one thing i didn't end up creating here in here was the wool around his collar which i knew i could create easily in cinema 4d so i just like left a nice big sort of like open area for that to be applied to and kind of like show off that sort of feature on him I'll then export it out as an FBX to bring into Cinema 4D to rig onto the model. For the next part of the process, I will bring just the head portion of the model into Substance Painter here. And that's another great thing that I like about the Character Creator 4 is that it comes with complete UVs set up so I can just bring the geometry in here and specifically paint exactly where I want all these two lines to show up on his face. Um, I like to do this for the face specifically just to bring out more of his character and all the details and for this guy specifically to add in these big scars across his face just to give him that little bit of extra character. I'll then export it out as just a normal PNG to bring into Cinema 4D to apply to the character itself. And now that all the external assets are created, including the model from Character Creator, the jacket from Marvelous Designer, and his face texture from uh, Substance Painter, I'll then go and build out the character as well as create additional assets for him such as like the comms unit and like his sort of like headpiece as well as just like adding little mechanical details onto the jacket. So I'll kind of like work inside of like this T-pose to kind of rig everything up into. Uh, mainly just like the jacket and stuff because like, as you can see some of the assets are kind of like crashing through it just because I'm kind of I only need like the end result or I get like a nice ambient animation through um, and so I'll attach these sort of pieces including the head using these constraint nulls that are as kind of attached to the bones so whenever I move the head bone around these things that aren't rigged to the head joint are a are constrained to it and move around with it. And then similar thing for these pieces on his arms and like chest area. Another great thing about that character creator model is it comes with a whole bunch of pose morph. Um, poses 
And so in here, I was able to create a bunch of facial features throughout the animation as he like expresses his love for his little pet or like and also just kind of like sneers away as his pet is shaking his head. And so you can just kind of see how I'm like animating all these post morphs that come with the character itself out just like by default out of the character creator 4 program. Just kind of see, kind of see how that end result looks like there. And so the last thing that's left to do for these characters are to set up my scene with lighting as well as rendering them out using the Arnold Render software. And so I'll usually just like have a pretty much isometric camera aimed at them. Um, where I want to get like a good character feel and so I kind of went with like a little bit of lower angle shot so he has that more of a menacing feel um, and then just do like a nice flat geo with a bit of a gradient for the background and then I'll render everything out using Arnold and you can see sort of my custom shader I have set up here where I kind of like go into creating sort of like hatching tune lines using this texture here and it's just like a tileable texture i created in photoshop and i'm using different masking with like lambert as well as facing ratios to kind of like mask off and specifically tell the shader where to create those tune hatching lines and so this whole system just kind of goes through like a different setup to just like mask things off but it all kind of comes down to like just like the shadow color the light color and then sort of like with this thing I have how much of those two lines to show up and then I have other things like these cinema 4d noises to kind of create those little gritty speckles and stuff that you see across my characters and scenes and here is the animation itself, all fully animated using that character creator for rig, rendered out in Arnold. And you can kind of see like all the pose morph stuff in the face. That was a nice way to animate it through using that sort of like default character creator rig. And in the end, I usually bring these over to my buddy Desco Sound and he does all the sound design and music for these characters to kind of like bring them to life just in that extra little bit. And so to wrap things up, here's a bunch of the characters I've created using that pretty much exact same process using that character creator base model as well as like even for these cyborg guys I'll still use that character creator rig as just a, it creates such a nice base rig to attach everything onto and then have the same ability to animate it and create all these completely unique stylized characters through. 